the world is on fire, with radical Islam fanning the flames. Enough's enough. Our police and our leaders tiptoe around this issue. This issue is political Islam. It's political Islam that's spreading across this country. One pastor's message for the so-called religion of peace. I am the true picture of what Islam is all about. After his face was nearly burnt off. I have fallen into the ambush of Muslim terrorists. On today's 700 Club. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of the 700 Club. We've got a fabulous program for you today. We've got uh, an analysis of what's going to break up of Europe, the terrible things that are happening there. We're going to talk about a woman, a young lady who was born with incurable diseases, who little by little by little was healed by God. We've got many, many exciting things. But uh, right now, the United States is once again calling on Iran to release an American pastor jailed for his faith. Saeed Abedini is serving an eight-year prison sentence. What? For sharing the gospel inside Iran. And Tuesday, Pastor Abedini's wife appeared before the United Nations in Geneva to plead for her husband's release. George Thomas has the story. For 251 days, Saeed Abedini has languished inside one of the most brutal prisons in the world. Why is he being held? because he ex exercised his rights of religious freedom, expression, and peaceful assembly. On Tuesday, his wife took her husband's case before the UN's Human Rights Council in Geneva. I hope that my presence here today will put a face to those who suffer when a government does not uphold its obligation to protect these freedoms. The 33-year-old Iranian-born U.S. citizen is sentenced to eight years in prison for his Christian faith, and while in prison, has endured torture. On at least two known occasions, Iran's officials have physically tortured my husband. These instances of tortures have caused my husband to have symptoms of internal bleeding. The White House on Monday said it was deeply concerned about Pastor Abedini's plight and promised to press for his release until he was back home with his family. The U.S. State Department also chimed in. We condemn Iran's continued violation of the universal right of freedom of religion and call on the Iranian authorities to respect Mr. Abedini's human rights and release him. We will continue to pursue this in every way that we possibly can, through every channel that we possibly can. But Abedini is not alone. Last month, Iranian authorities shut down the largest Persian language church and arrested its pastor. With less than two weeks to go before Iranians pick their next president, authorities are reportedly targeting individuals and groups deemed dangerous including growing Christian churches. Just before ending her UN speech, Nagme said on Facebook that she wanted to use her appearance to plant the seeds of the gospel message before a global audience. Iran has kept Saeed's imprisonment because Saeed believes in forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ and that whoever accepts this forgiveness of sin can be reconciled to the God of peace and love. This is the God of peace we're all searching for. George Thomas, CBN News. Well, we keep praying for that man. It's just shocking the brutality that takes place in Iran. And uh, this is what happens when the Muslims gain control. This is an Islamic state run by mullahs. Well, you know, in the Bible, it talks about somebody not being able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And somebody says, well, that's just old-fashioned fiction. Well, is it? Here at home, a new technology that could change the way people buy and sell is attracting a great deal of attention. Lee Webb has more on that and other news from the CBN Newsroom. Here's Lee. New technology could let you have an electronic tattoo that can store your passwords online. Motorola demonstrated the electronic tattoo at a recent technology conference. The so-called biostamps contain flexible electronic circuits. They attach to the skin with a rubber stamp. To verify your identity, users would just place their smartphone near their tattoo. Motorola is also touting computer chip pills, if you can believe that. Once swallowed, stomach acid powers the tiny tablets, and they give off a signal that can verify your identity. Privacy advocates, however, are concerned about all of this, but a Motorola spokeswoman says the company will not be put off by people who find the technology, quote, creepy. Privacy expert Catherine Albrecht tells CBN News that that technology like this 
could have far-reaching implications. I have to say, as a Bible-believing Christian, that I have some real concerns about this being a mark on the skin that's actually transmitting a number that down the road could definitely be used to buy and sell and really to perform just about every other action in society. The technology will not be available for some time, uh, but it's in the works, Pat. You know, the frightening thing is that with miniaturization, they can take everything about you, all of your stock accounts, all of your bank accounts, all of your insurance policies, all of your health data, all of the way you voted, all the way where you live and when you've moved and what education you have. It can all be present on that chip, just a little teeny, teeny chip. And uh, yes, it can be inserted under the skin. They've already done that, but now they've got something that's even easier. You just, you know, it's glued on. Uh, I mean, they think that's a, a move forward, but it's a move backwards toward Big Brother. And it's, uh, I'm telling you, the Bible is coming true right before our very eyes. Well, there's a shocker coming up. One of the least qualified people in the government is now going to be promoted to a very sensitive role. Here's that story. President Obama's top national security advisor, Tom Donilon, is resigning. He'll be replaced by the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Susan Rice. Conservatives criticized Rice, of course, severely after she blamed the attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya, on a YouTube video. Instead, of course, it turned out to be a terrorist attack. President Obama considered nominating Susan Rice for Secretary of State. She withdrew, though, because of Republican criticism. She does not need Senate confirmation for this new position. Betrayal, fear, intimidation. Those are some of the words conservatives used in a congressional hearing to describe how they felt when dealing with the Internal Revenue Service in the last few years. The IRS targeted Tea Party and other conservative groups and held them up from getting tax-exempt status. Ephraim Graham has that story. Some conservative groups for the first time on Capitol Hill testified about their experiences with the IRS Tuesday. One group says it waited three years for the IRS to approve its tax-exempt status. Another is still waiting. But they all say they were targeted because of their conservative political views. The Wetumpka Tea Party filled out a complete application. Our organization fell within the boundaries of receiving a 501c4 status. Yet, our application was singled out solely because we had Tea Party in our name. Nearly three years of waiting for an answer is totally unacceptable. The IRS needs to be fully investigated and held accountable for its incompetence, harassment, and targeting of conservative groups. The president of the Coalition for Life of Iowa testified the IRS asked about the content of their prayers, and the IRS demanded they promise not to demonstrate outside Planned Parenthood. The National Organization for Marriage testified someone from within the IRS leaked their confidential tax documents to a gay activist group. The copy of our tax returns and our list of donors uh, that was posted there was redacted. Uh, our computer forensic people were able to unlayer the redactions from that PDF file and discovered that the original document that was posted there had originated from within the IRS. The National Organization for Marriage says that means someone at the IRS committed a felony. Ephraim Graham, CBN News. You saw Becky Gerritsen in Ephraim's report. She is the president of a Tea Party group uh, outside of Montgomery, Alabama. She told the committee, I'm a born free American woman. I'm telling my government you've forgotten your place. Pat, I got to tell you, that was powerful testimony yesterday. Very powerful. The idea that the IRS is leaking documents, though, that is a federal crime. They put you in a slammer for many years for doing that. And if those officials have done it, it's serious business. But not only that, Lee, uh, the, the thing that, you know, that Congressman McDermott was was the blow for hating, I believe, in one of those hearings about the fact that these people were asking for the government to pick up the tab. A C-4 doesn't get any benefit at all in terms of tax uh, reduction. Contributions to C-4s are not tax deductible. The uh, income of a C-4 is not necessarily tax deductible, but uh, if it is, it's from contributions, and we don't have to pay taxes if somebody gives us a gift. So the idea that the government is going to have to pay the bills for this is absurd. 
Now, C3, on the other hand, the people do get tax deduction for the uh, contributions they make to charitable organizations, religious churches, and so forth. But a C4 uh, is permitted to do lobbying and is permitted to speak out, but there's no tax deduction for the donors to C4s. So if anybody says that as a con congressman, he ought to know better. Lee? Pat, new details are coming out now about IRS waste of taxpayer dollars. Senior IRS officials enjoyed luxury hotel rooms and free drinks at a $4 million training conference in Anaheim, California. They also had some dance lessons, I guess, here, if you can look at that. That's according to a report by an inspector general in the Treasury Department. The 2010 meeting was one of many expensive gatherings the agency held for employees over a three-year period. One top official even stayed in a room that cost $3,500 a night. Another stayed four nights in a room that cost nearly $1,500 a night. The IRS also spent more than $500,000 to produce three videos that we showed you there shown at the conference. That massive tornado that hit Oklahoma Friday was the widest ever recorded. Experts say it was more than two and a half miles wide. They've also confirmed it was a strong EF5 tornado with winds nearly 300 miles per hour. The Oklahoma Medical Examiner's Office says the death toll is now up to 19, but one expert says it could have been much worse had it hit a heavily populated area. William Hoke of the American Meteorological Society says, you dodged a bullet. You lay that path over Oklahoma City and you have devastation of biblical proportions. Meanwhile, Operation Blessing still on the ground in Moore, Oklahoma, south of Oklahoma City. Over the two weeks they have been there, they have coordinated and sent out more than 2,500 volunteers. What groups do we have that um, this is their first day um, coming to volunteer? Where are you guys from over here? Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama. Give it up for Mobile. Bless their hearts for serving like that. Teams support residents through hard work as well as prayer. Well, sunscreen is known to be one of the best defenses against skin cancer. Now researchers believe it can slow signs of aging, too. A study out of Australia compared people who use sunscreen randomly and those who used it daily. After four and a half years, the regular users had almost 25 percent less aging, at least on their hands. Ultraviolet rays cause damage to your skin any time you're in the sun. Dermatologists recommend using sunscreen daily, but also limiting time outdoors during peak UV hours. That's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Vegetarians live longer than people who eat meat. That's the finding from a new study of more than 73,000 people for nearly six years. Researchers from Loma Linda University in California followed members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Apparently, that's a denomination that supports a vegetarian diet. The study found 12 percent fewer deaths among vegetarians. Researchers also found that they had less chance of dying from heart disease, diabetes, and kidney failure. The study also pointed out that vegetarians are more likely to live a healthy lifestyle, not drinking or smoking. Science does know that plant food is good for your health, and this study is likely to be seen as more confirmation of that, Pat. So we'll slather on sunscreen and we'll eat our veggies and exactly. be healthy and live <laughs> One long. One can only hope, right? That's right. Hey, I want to put in a plug for Operation Blessing. Mm -hmm. This tornado and, and more, you know, the thing came back again and, and yeah. uh, not the same one, but another one. Um, we have uh, volunteers out there and um, we're, um, well, it's, it's committed to support the uh, residents of that area with prayer and hard work, we have uh, 2,500 volunteers uh, in the two weeks uh, that they were in Oklahoma and the Disaster Relief Fund, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia. By the way, Terry, th this uh, was a two and a half mile. It was the biggest they'd ever seen. They said if it hit Oklahoma, it would be uh, a massive, massive, massive. Uh, uh, devastation. There's a little town, I believe the name is Breslau, in, in, on the border of Czechoslovakia in Germany. They had the worst flooding they'd had in over 500 years. Oh so we're talking about extraordinary weather. Why? I don't know, but nevertheless, it's there. And uh, the biggest hurricanes, the hottest temperature, the coldest temperature, 
and the most massive flood in central Germany, uh, at least I guess it's southern Germany, uh, that, that uh, they have had in, in 500 years. It's extraordinary. Unpredictable. Yeah, Unpredictable sure well, weather patterns. Okay. But we can make a difference by helping in the aftermath. Yeah. So we thank you. Well, coming up, turmoil spreading across Europe. Enough. We have weak leaders, weak police. Our police and our leaders tiptoe around this issue. How radical Islam is wreaking havoc in Great Britain and beyond. Plus, meet the man who says his face is the true picture of Islam. If you've been thinking about financial options for your retirement, maybe how to provide some real security for you and your family, you really ought to consider a reverse mortgage with AAG. In uncertain times, it's a safe, effective financial tool. It's already being used by hundreds of thousands of other Americans. It allows you to eliminate monthly mortgage payments, pay some bills, or simply enjoy your retirement more. A government-insured reverse mortgage with AEG allows seniors to stay in their home and turn their equity into tax-free cash. To qualify, there are no credit score requirements. And remember, you continue to retain complete ownership of your home. Call 1-800-789-8635 to receive a new special edition handbook featuring reverse mortgage borrowers, plus an educational brochure and DVD presented by Fred Thompson absolutely free. Find out more. Call AAG today. Call 1-800-789-8635 now. I've always loved technology and gadgets and video and computers and I wanted to find a way that I could take all of those and affect people for eternity and I could do all that here at CBN. In fact, it's my job to make sure that all the video at CBN can be accessed on any device that you have, whether it's your computer, whether it's your iPad, whether it's your phone or your iPod Touch and even internet connected TVs. Here we change pictures, video, and text. We update blogs so we can make surfing easier for you. I really feel like I'm a 21st century missionary and I reach the world through the internet. My name is Jeremy West. I'm the digital systems manager and I work at CBN. Thursday. Right before it sets off, there's a quiet that's deafening. The sounds of silence. You hear people sharpening their toothbrushes, sharpening their picks. Locked up behind bars. Some of the guys carry razors in their mouth. The inmate who took no prisoners. That becomes a big sledgehammer if I need to defend myself. And scared them straight. This has to stop. Everything we're doing is a fraud. Thursday on The 700 Club. Well, political correctness is rife in the universities and in the uh, so-called elite media. They don't want to talk about the, what political correctness can do or what multiculturalism can do to a nation. And you don't hear about this in other news media, but CBN News has been reporting for years that Europe is facing more and more social, religion, and religious and financial problems. And the root of it all is, according to our reporters, political correctness. Our reporter, Dale Hurd, brings us this cogent analysis that you won't see anywhere else. On May 21st, French historian Dominic Venner shocked France when he walked into Notre Dame Cathedral, put a letter on the altar, and shot himself in the head. It was a protest against Islamization and France's new gay marriage law. He said in his suicide note he hoped his death would wake up the nation. Europe is being forced to awaken because parts of Europe are literally on fire. In Sweden a few weeks ago, predominantly Muslim immigrants set fires for several nights. In Britain, a soldier was butchered on a London street by a Muslim. In France, a recent convert to Islam tried to do the same thing to a French soldier, but only wounded him. Amidst failing economies, Europe is continuing to fracture into ethnic tribes that hate one another. Even German Chancellor Angela Merkel has admitted that multiculturalism has failed. It's led to immigrant ghettos inside European cities that are breeding grounds for radicalism and hostility to mainstream society. In Paris, we asked Guy Millier, author of the new book, Radical Islam is a Weapon of Mass Destruction, 
why the European establishment continues to allow and encourage Islam to spread while suppressing Christianity. The connection between radical Muslims and uh, leftists in Europe is that both are totalitarian and uh, they see something in common between them and radical Muslims. A lot of European leaders still seem to fear political correctness more than Islamic terrorism. British Prime Minister David Cameron said there is nothing in Islam that justified the beheading of British soldier Lee Rigby by a Muslim, ignoring the many verses in the Quran that command Muslims to behead unbelievers. Cameron instead called the murder a betrayal of Islam. It took the Somali terrorist group Al-Shabaab to correct Cameron in a series of tweets, saying that the gruesome killing wasn't a betrayal of Islam, but a portrayal of Islam. The Rigby murder caused rioting and attacks on mosques across Britain. Enough's enough. Our message is enough, enough. We have weak leaders, weak police. Our police and our leaders tiptoe around this issue. This issue is political Islam. It's political Islam that's spreading across this country. Across the channel in France, opponents of the new gay marriage and adoption law now talk openly of revolution. One group even calling itself the French Spring. They view the new law as a tool of the left to tear down French tradition, and it seems to have galvanized hatred for the leftist government of Francois Hollande. I think that the main aim of the French government is to destroy traditional families. They speak about rights, they speak about equality, but it's not a question of rights, it's not a question of equality, it's a question of destruction of the family. In Eastern Europe, fascism is on the march. Hungary's Jobbik is the third largest party in parliament. Its leader says only a show of strength is effective against the unscrupulous Zionist advance. And Jobbik wants a national registry drawn up listing all the Jews in Hungary. Similar movements are active in Greece, Poland and Slovakia. Meanwhile, the European Union continues to fail economically. And a recent poll shows that for the first time, most EU citizens don't like the idea of the European Union. Europeans' faith in and belief in the European project, the fact uh, that uh, economic integration should be good for them, well, they don't believe that anymore. In Rome, an Italian taxi driver says Europe should be written off, not Italy. It's Europe that's not working. In Spain, homeless families are squatting in unsold apartment buildings. In Greece, former members of the middle class find themselves sleeping outdoors. It's no longer just Europe's ghettos that are breeding grounds for radicalism. Today, trouble is brewing all across Europe. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Very perceptive, Dale. We appreciate your voice, and you're one of the few that are bringing such a voice uh, to us. You know, folks, when you go back in history, uh, Santayana said, if you don't learn the lessons of history, you're doomed to live them all over again. And I think that's what we're seeing now. Uh, back in the 20s, uh, the uh, Versailles Treaty uh, that the victorious powers had imposed on Germany after World War I was very draconian and uh, just crippled Germany, crippled that country and humiliated them. And then they went through a devastating inflation that just their currency was wiped out, their savings were wiped out, and the middle class was decimated. Okay, so what happened? They wanted somebody who would be a man on a white horse to lead them to victory, and somebody came along preaching the, the destiny of the master race, the Aryan race, and uh, that Germany was destined to lead the world. And they responded, the Germans responded and elected Adolf Hitler their leader. And then he began to be called a Fuhrer. Then they began to, you know, give him a salute, you know, Zig Heil. And then the next thing you know, it was a persecution of Jews and a persecution of Christians and then a suppression of all of them, dissent and a war that cost 50 million lives. Could this be building up in Europe again, this unrest, because they, they've forsaken Christianity and they've forsaken the roots of what made that area great at one time? And uh, what's going to come of it? Are they, do they have enough strength to come together with some kind of a, a economic uh, coalition and military coalition? Well, right now they don't have it, but Hitler didn't have it either, but we let him get away with it. So we don't know what's going to happen, but. Um, 
if there was ever a time to pray, then now is the time to pray because the, most of us come from Europe. That's where our ancestors came from. And so we have ties back to Germany and back to Sweden and Norway and Scotland and England and so forth. So let's hope for the best. Terry. Well, up next, a pastor from Uganda is ambushed outside his church on Christmas Eve by Muslim terrorists. See how this former Muslim is receiving help from a doctor in Israel. Hey, I just heard some great news. My parents and grandparents will live longer than ever in the 21st century. And me too. How great is that? But Grandpa says that means lots of retirement plans without gold may not as last as long as we will. How bad is that? Grandpa says the solution is simple. Change some paper money into gold and silver coins that withstood the test of time. It's as simple as taking paper money from one pocket and putting gold money into the other pocket. That's how to live long and prosper. Let Swiss America help you build a totally great gold retirement plan like they did for Grandpa to help make sure you don't outlive your money. He says that gives him real peace of mind. Call the number on the screen or visit online and ask for their simple, true golden retirement kit. Best of all, it's free. Do it for your family's future. Help your retirement dreams become a reality with real money. And that's the simple truth. Hi, I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, over the years you've heard me say two and two, but now I'm here to talk about three for free. If you're struggling with pain and infection from old-style catheters, then you need Medical Direct Club's new virtually pain-free disposable catheters. Right now, you can get Medical Direct Club's three for free sample pack with one self-lubricating catheter, one polished eyelet catheter, and a travel size catheter. You get your free pack, see which one's right for you. You use an old-style catheter, they're rough, they're very painful. The new ones, virtually pain-free. You know, Medicare and your insurance now pay for up to 200 of these virtually pain-free catheters per month at little or no cost to you. And if our catheters aren't virtually pain-free, then we'll pick them up for free. You'll never know unless you try them. Call now to get your three for free sample pack. Call toll-free 1-800-206-3360. That's 1-800-206-3360. Call now. Well, this is a fascinating story that we've got for you right now. Omar Melendi was a Muslim who hated Israel. But what happened to Omar? Jesus appeared to him in a dream. And after that, Omar became a Christian and started a church in his native Uganda. But his remarkable story doesn't end there. Scott Ross went with Melinda in Israel where he was receiving treatment for severe burns after Muslim extremists threw acid on him. On Christmas Eve 2011, Pastor Umar Melinde was attacked by two Muslims with buckets of acid. The acid ate away his skin, his eye, and his ear. He now wears a special pressure mask to aid the healing process. My conversion from Islam and my love and promotion of the love of Israel uh, uh, in my community uh, touched the, uh, the people on the other side to, to haunt me and to hunt me for a kill. Melinde was raised as a Muslim and hated Israel. He knew if he deserted Islam, he could be killed. But he had a dream that changed his life. It was a vision you had or a dream? It's a dream sleeping. I was in the midst of fire crying, but I saw that many of the people who were with me in this fire were the fellow Muslims we go with in the mosque. But as I was crying at, at, at the climax of, a, of the scene, somebody shining stood on the right side and told me that Islam is leading you to this torture. Repent, be born again, you shall survive. Instead of believing in Jesus, Melinde prayed Muslim prayers against bad dreams but it didn't work. And after that, I went back to my place and the dream came again. The following day, I took myself to the church and uh, I gave my life to Jesus. Melinde became a successful evangelist, winning other Muslims to the Lord. He later founded Gospel Life Church in Kampala, Uganda, 
where 30% of more than their 1,000 members are ex-Muslims. He also came to love Israel and brought others to visit the Holy Land. Your former friends and your brothers in Islam must have hated you. They hated me. That's the reason. So on the 24th uh, of December, 2011, as I was coming out of my church, somebody pretended as a believer, he said, Pastor, can you help me? He wanted my attention, my full face, yet he had a bucket of acid in his right hand. As I was turning like this, the Spirit of God in me told me, he's a wrong person. So I turned my face to enter my car quickly to drive away. As I was going, approaching my car, he poured a bucket of acid on my head. Oh. So I felt like I'm being thrown into hell. I felt fire from up to down to my toes. And uh, I was like, something is cooking me. And uh, they shouted, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, three times. I realized that I, I have fallen into the ambush of, of Muslim terrorists. Melinda was rushed from one hospital to another, first in Uganda, then in India, and finally Israel. It was a deep, very deep and very severe burn to the face, ear and eye. I spoke with Dr. Joseph Hike, head of the burn center at Sheba Medical Center, Telechomer Hospital. Because it was two weeks old, we had uh, to wait and see that our cleansing was good enough or sufficient. And then in the second stage, uh, we ordered skin substitutes. We uh, reconstructed the face, uh, obviously in association with his own uh, skin grafts. This is a man from Uganda. Mm -hmm. And here we are in Israel. Uh, so why would you take him in here? There's no difference and we do not discriminate between age, race, origin, religion or whatever. This hospital has a big tradition uh, for many years now to help around the world. What is the prognosis now from here on out? Most of the grafting uh, helped and succeeded in 100 percent, but unfortunately we'll need further surgeries. Melindy told me that people need to understand that it takes the power of God to spread the gospel and comes with persecution. So you're not angry with God? I'm not angry with God. It has encouraged me to serve the Lord more, to expose the lies. You see, people say Islam is a peaceful religion. But if you say that Islam is peaceful, look at me. Yes. I am the true picture of what Islam is all about. They, they say there are radical elements and there are good elements, peaceful elements in, in Islam as well. But that's not practical because these radical people, they read what they read from the Quran. And whenever a Muslim does not like something, everywhere in the world people know, they will demonstrate on the street. If not killing ambassadors, they will burn the houses and everything. Melinda says Islam wants to rule the world, and terrorists take their inspiration from verses in the Quran. This verse says, فَقَتِلْهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتِنَا وَيَكُونَ دِينَ اللَّهِ Which means, kill, fight, and kill those non-Muslims until when there is no any other except the religion of Allah. How do we as Christians, in my case, an American Christian from Scotland, um, how do we fight that? How do we defend ourselves against that? Islam is eating the West because the Western world has compromised and sweet talking about uh, what is happening and thinking that keeping quiet will save the situation. But you have to remember, hiding your head in the sand cannot chase your enemy who is, who is chasing you to kill you. How do I, how do I love my enemy? If in, in this case you, you said you love your enemy, they did this to you. The best way to love your enemy, in this case, to love the Muslims, is to preach the gospel of Christ to them. Mm. If we take the gospel to them, at whatever cost, we are loving them. Fascinating interview. Uh, 
You know, uh, we have a, a man who heads up our Arabic language uh, ministry, and uh, he, he's uh, an expert in the Quran. And I said, I want to get some verses on uh, uh, the killing and the slaughter that's uh, prescribed in the Quran. And he said, well, remember, on the other hand, there are all kinds of peaceful verses in there. And I said, well, tell me more about these peaceful verses. He said, well, when Muhammad uh, was living in a minority situation, <clears throat> he said they should pray toward Jerusalem and uh, they would honor the Jews and the Christians as people of the book. I said, well, what happened? Well, when he got to Medina, Medina, he became powerful. And then he said, let's go on a, a crusade against Mecca, and then let's go on a crusade to the rest of the world. And the scholars say the peaceful verses in the Quran have, quote, been abrogated. That's the term they use. There's an abrogation. Those no longer apply because Muhammad changed his mind and said, forget this praying to Jerusalem. We pray toward Mecca and forget being nice. These people are the descendants of apes and pigs. Total difference. But the, the earlier verses have been abrogated. Unless you understand that abrogation, you don't understand what's happening. Okay, so much for that. Well, wow, it's a challenge to the church, really, to not be intimidated, but to continue to share the well, gospel. He's right. Got That's to stop this lie that this is a religion of peace. The the political Islam wants world domination. They want to establish, reestablish the caliphate. They want to take domination over the Middle East. They want domination over Europe, and. The Quran is very explicit on this. It's not, there's no guesswork. Mm -hmm. The world is divided into two parts, Dar al-Harb, Dar al-Islam. The world is either at war or is under submission to Islam. There is no middle ground. Okay, let's get some questions. Okay, time for email. This first one is from Argelia who asks, what is the difference between a Christian and a Messianic believer? Well, I think a Messianic believer is a Christian. They're, they're, it's a Jewish name for those Jews who believe in the Messiah, that Jesus is the Messiah. And now some continue Jewish practices, and I don't know about all that, but uh, in my opinion, they're absolutely Christian. Mm -hmm. This is from Ann Pat, who says, yesterday, my 17-year-old granddaughter said, God doesn't know everything. I asked her how she came up with this, and she said, in school, through sociology. My heart just sank. How do I respond to her without turning her off? She does believe in God. I don't want to sit back and watch the enemy steal my grandkids. I have five, and they all probably think like this. Right. Please help me. I do believe in prayer, but what can I say to them face to face? It's easy, Ann. Ask her a question. What is it that God doesn't know? And then, how did you find out? Did he tell you? And no, I, I heard it from my sociology professor. Well, how does he know? Did God tell him? And what did God tell him? And uh, where was he and where were you when God laid the foundation of the earth? And do you know all the mysteries that are ex in the world? And the world maybe is 14 billion years ago. Were you there then? Can you explain all those things? But just ask her, what is it that God doesn't know? And then how did you find out that he doesn't know it? I think for starters, <laughs> for starters, it'll, it'll get her a little mind running the way it ought to. What's that? Okay, this is Linda who says, Pat, what is the truth about being born again? Is it the same as being born of the Spirit? Does it automatically happen when you give your life to Jesus and accept Him as Lord? When you give your heart to Jesus and accept Him as Lord, and you really repent of your sin and you really accept Him then <clears throat> you are born again, and that, that thing is a transaction of the Spirit. So it's being born of the Spirit. It's the same thing. Okay. This is Janice who says, <laughs> I know Israel has 12 tribes, but why was it made into two nations, Israel and Judah? Well, as you recall, uh, on the days of Solomon, his son Rehoboam uh, was cruel and foolish, and uh, Ten tribes revolted against Rehoboam, and they went with, uh, with Jeroboam, yeah. and uh, they formed Israel. And the one that stayed with the old 
king was Judah and Benjamin. So that's how you split it up into ten and two, and then later on it was one nation of Israel uh, in modern days. All right. Okay, this is Kim who says, for the last month or so, I've been suffering with insomnia. I pray to God every night asking him to let me get a full night's sleep, but he isn't answering my prayer. Doesn't he want me to get sleep? How do I get sleep? Um, why don't you do some of the things that are necessary? You know, the Bible says, don't forsake wisdom. Don't forsake wisdom. And wisdom says, you want to sleep? <laughs> Take melatonin. <laughs> you want to sleep? <laughs> What's the verse of that? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Esdras 16.5. <laughs> melatonin. Uh, but, it's natural, though. I mean, it really is. natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you sleep in a dark room, you cut your temperature down to like 65 when you sleep. Uh, you, you don't watch exciting television just before you go to sleep. You do all these things and you're relaxed. And, uh, you know, don't forsake wisdom. You say, well, God, help me get sleep. Well, I, he's told you how to get sleep. Just open your eyes and find out how. Okay. I'm amazed at the number of people who have an issue with that, though. That is, a, getting good sound sleep is a problem well, for lots and lots of people. We're also getting a decent mattress. You know, we had a, we had a mattress <laughs> expert. Right. So we, there, there are all kinds of things that keep you from sleeping well, but if you have bright light, if you have noise, if, if, if you've got stuff playing all the time, if you're constantly worried about what's going on at the office, you've just got to chill out mm -hmm. and you say, ask God, well, God will show you help how to, me do, to do this. help you yeah. to do it. All right. We thank you for your email questions. Coming up, an amazing story of multiple miracles. We want you to meet a young woman who was born with the hole in her heart, kidney problems, and a missing eyelid, plus other issues. See how the power of God healed her. That's on today's 700 Club. If you have Medicare and have a chronic breathing condition, you can take your medication using an inhaler. Or this, a portable nebulizer from Med for Home. Independent studies have shown a nebulizer may be more effective and easier to use than just an inhaler. Impressive. It's like getting hospital quality treatment at home. So call Med for Home today to find out more. Med for Home is a specialty pharmacy that's here to help you however they can. They'll deal with your doctor, the paperwork, even ship for free. And their pharmacist and respiratory therapist are available 24-7. What's more, your nebulizer and medications may even be covered by your Part B benefits. For a better treatment at a much better price, call med for home now to learn how a portable nebulizer can help you start breathing better today. For more information, call 1-800-210-5821. Welcome back to the 700 Club. An artist whose painting was removed from an Air Force dining hall says the Pentagon is censoring Christian art. Ron DeCiani's painting is called Blessed Are the Peacemakers and references the scripture Matthew 5, 9. It was part of a collection to honor the heroes who responded to the 9-11 terrorist attacks. But it was removed from Idaho's Mountain Home Air Force Base less than an hour after the Military Religious Freedom Foundation complained. That's the same organization whose leader called religious proselytizing a national security threat. The artist's son told Fox News, on its face, this seems like nothing short of a clear anti-Christian agenda. An Egyptian court has convicted 43 nonprofit workers of illegally using foreign funds to incite unrest. That includes at least 16 Americans. All but one of the Americans were sentenced in absentia. Egypt's uh, Muslim Brotherhood government is criticized for restricting the work of independent government groups. The State Department called the court's decision incompatible with the democratic transition. You can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Stay tuned. Pat and Terry will be back after this. In 2008, my husband Gary departed for heaven. I was still grieving. And then to find out I had cancer, I began praying, God, how do I do this? Where do I do this? Cancer Treatment Centers of America was the place. Dr. Neelam outlined a plan that would take care of my mind and my body, and she prayed with me. 
for Bible-believing Christians. We're able to pray with them in a much deeper way as they begin to really rely upon their faith. At Cancer Treatment Centers of America, we believe in the power of faith and prayer as indispensable allies in the fight against complex and advanced stage cancer. I'm back in Telluride on the mountain skiing. I feel strong and healthy. Advanced medicine and technology. And I am a survivor. The warm embrace of the spirit and the power of prayer. These are happy tears. Please go to cancercenter.com forward slash faith. Appointments available now. Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Care that never quits. Open your ears, people. Your phone company's living in the Stone Age. Barbaric pricing models. Outdated technology. What we need is a company that connects us with generosity. Is that so crazy, businessman? Not to me. In fact, we should talk. Meet Vonage's new chief generosity officer. We shall no longer let time nor distance keep us from connecting. That's crazy. Crazy? Crazy generous. See what we did? We turned it around. To see this week's top on-demand videos, go to CBN.com. Well, when Sandra Stanzione was born, she had multiple problems. Her kidneys were failing, her heart had a hole in it, and her left eye was missing an eyelid. Sandra's parents were Christians, but they had never heard that God still heals today until her mom turned on the 700 Club. It was very traumatic. It was not what any mom would want to hear. Carol was pregnant with her first child and had a routine ultrasound. It revealed that her daughter had excessive fluid in her brain. The one doctor I had said that she probably would be, had an 80% chance of being mentally retarded, blind and or deaf because of the compression of the brain while she was forming in my body. That same doctor encouraged Carol to have an abortion. She and her husband, Paul Stanzione, didn't even need to discuss it. The easiest decision was to change doctors. God's given us this child, and if he wants us to have this child, whatever the issues are, we're gonna have this child. Carol carried the baby full term, and they named her Sandra. She had several physical deformities. The most noticeable was a missing left eyelid, but there were other problems. And when they uh, started Working with her eye, they also found um, that she also had a hole in her heart. As more and more tests were made, more and more problems would just show up. Sandra had kidney issues. We noticed that her left side was not keeping up with the right side. Her left arm was smaller, her left leg was smaller. So it was a very difficult first year. One day the doctor called and gave them more bad news. He said that if her kidneys continued to deteriorate at this rate, she would be dead within the year. I just remember hanging up the phone and had my back to the wall and I just slid down the wall and just broke down and cried. And I had no hope. I did not have hope. I did not know where to go. I did not know what to do. My daughter needed healing and I wanted somebody to help pray with me. And I went from church to church, and I basically got the same answers, was that God made her this way, you have to accept this. It was devastating. It was a very isolating time. Carol was flipping through channels one day and found a show she'd never watched before, The 700 Club. There's nothing impossible for God. If Pat Robertson was on TV and he started talking about a God who still heals, a God who still heals. Those are incredible words. I had not heard them in any of the churches. I had not heard them from the people. I just heard that I had to just accept the way Sandra was gonna be probably in a wheelchair or probably with a walker. But this man on TV said that there's a God who still heals. That was amazing. It was amazing. It was exactly what I needed to hear. When Carol discovered the 700 Club and heard of a God that does heal today, it was awesome. And then we started believing that Sandra can be healed. God can do this. There was hope for Sandra. There was hope. Carol began watching the show every day. 
One time, while praying for Sandra's kidneys, she says she felt power go through her hand as she touched her daughter's back. The next doctor visit revealed something amazing. She had another ultrasound, and the hole in the heart was gone. And they could not find anything wrong with her heart. And I start jumping up and down. I go, oh, it wasn't her kidneys. It was her heart. It was her heart. I'm jumping up and down. I'm praising God. We began to believe that God can do anything. That happened almost 20 years ago. Since then, Carol and Paul say there have been many more miracles. The biggest one was the joy of watching their daughter grow up. I mean, she has eyelashes where they couldn't really grow. Um, it's just skin pulled from the side of her face, but God put eyelashes on that eyelid. God did that miraculously, so I can have eyelashes even though it's not a typical, normal eyelid. A hole in her heart is gone. Her kidneys are now functioning at normal. She has two legs that are absolutely perfect and beautiful. She went on to be a cheerleader. She's now on the dean's list at the college she goes to, and I am just so proud of her. There's nothing that she can't do trusting in God. Today, the Stanzione family says they have been forever changed through the healing power and love of Jesus Christ. The Bible says all things are possible through Christ, and I just want people to understand that, that they really can trust Him and focus their lives around Him because He really is the only one that we can fully depend on and trust in. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I've seen His healing touch, I've felt His healing touch, and He does heal today. And the biggest story is, like I said, is not as the heart or the hands or the legs, it's the lives that have been changed. There is hope that that you just can't get from the world or even individual religions. It, it's about a God who loves us, and He still is. It's very exciting. It's very exciting, and we hope you're excited today. The word that kept resounding through that story is hope, 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 hope. You know? You've got to have hope by the word. The faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, and we need to understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that this thing that the miracle stopped with the first century is alive, the devil, it just isn't true. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. Yeah. And He does miracles now, just like He did in the early days of the church. God is, is, is uh, eternal, and He's touching people's lives. This is a marvelous example. Terry, here's something else that I think is important. Uh, Mark lives in Mesa, Arizona developed a serious distortion in the alignment of his spine. It caused, you know, terrible headaches and constantly. And he, he was watching this program. You had a word, quote, you have a misalignment between your brain stem and your spine. God is straightening you. Mark says, that's me. He felt a difference he, uh, at first. Suddenly, a few days later, the pain disappeared. His wow. neck's aligned with his head. Everything is good. You know, when I hear a report like that, I just think that he is the God who sees us. He sees us. That's you right. know, and, and he knows so specifically what we need. Well, in April of last year, Ramon, who lives in Tacoma, Washington, stepped into a hole and fell. X-rays showed a hairline fracture in his heel that allowed a bone spur to develop. Well, that pain continued for over a year. And then just last month, Pat, Ramon was watching the 700 Club on his birthday. He heard you give this word of knowledge. You said, somebody's got a bone spur in your heel, and it's very painful. Right now, it's literally melting away, and it's gone. He said he felt warmth go through his foot. The pain immediately left, and he was able to walk without hobbling at all. God, That's a miracle. God gives us the power to speak as he did, to speak the word that causes miracles to take place. We speak forth that word. It's a creative word. When you have the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of God speaks through His people. This isn't some hocus pocus. This is biblical. It is New Testament Christianity. Now, Terry and I are going to join together. There are many of you, many of you that have needs. We're going to pray right now. You ready? Let's do it. I'm ready. 
-hmm. Father, I join with my dear sister. Thank you, Jesus. And we join with our dear friends there, husbands and wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters. We join together in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Someone has a bleeding ulcer. The Lord is healing that right now. You'll feel fire in your stomach, and you are healed in the name of Jesus. There's a, a weak arm. You, you're having a wasting in your muscle in your arm. That suddenly you're going to find something. It's, you can feel something pressing against the skin, and your muscle is going to grow even as we speak. A creative miracle. Terry. There's someone else. You have a condition. I have no idea what it's called, but it has something to do with your tendons. It's not a tendon. It's tendons in your body and they're shortened like they don't stretch the way that they're supposed to and this puts you in a crippling condition god is healing that for you right now the power of the lord is just going to begin to flow through you and those tendons are going to become normal uh, you have there's a coughing you're coughing and it's like, almost like you want to throw up you're just you know violently sick right now god has just healed you it's like he's mm -hmm. put his hand on your forehead and you can feel his touch and that coughing and that nausea is leaving in the name of Jesus. And someone else, you have the base of your spine sits in your hips wrong, and God is straightening that out for you right now. All that pain you've had, the inability to walk freely, it's all going to be gone. You're going to have total healing. Fear is leaving right now. Some of you have been uh, overcome with the spirit of fear. You, you, you just feel debilitated. You, you just drag around because of fear. God is lifting that spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus. And yes, and some of you, you, you have children. You watch this story, and you're afraid to believe the Lord for them. But t today, God would say to you, whose report do you believe? And your Amen. response needs to be, I will believe the report of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And wherever you are, you thank the Lord. You give Him praise. You give Him thanks. You give Him worship. He is a great God. There's nothing impossible with Him. Now, if we can help you, you can call in all day long. These telephones are available. You can call. We love hearing, hearing from you. We like your questions that come in on email. And uh, we're here to help you. Well, on tomorrow's program, we're going to be exposing the radical times uh, behind the mosque that the Boston bombers attended. Where did it come from? Where did their philosophy come from? And we leave you today with these words from 1 John 3.22. Whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. God bless all of you. You have a wonderful day, and we'll be with you again at this same time tomorrow. So for Terry and Lee and all of us, this is Pat Robertson. Goodbye. God bless you. Thursday. Right before it sets off, there's a quiet that's deafening. The sounds of silence. You hear people sharpening their toothbrushes, sharpening their picks. Locked up behind bars. Some of the guys carry razors in their mouth. The inmate who took no prisoners. That becomes a big sledgehammer if I need to defend myself. And scared them straight. This has to stop. Everything we're doing is a fraud. Thursday on The 700 Club. We were so hungry. I carried my brother to my aunt's house to ask for food, but she didn't let us in. Vaughn was crying so hard because he was starving. I couldn't do anything to help him. There was a time when we didn't have food to eat for two days. My stomach hurt a lot. The food here is so good, and we get to eat three times a day. Thank you, CBN. These are the things you make possible when you partner with CBN. Thousands of people around the world begin new lives because you cared enough to give. To those of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club, thank you. Your help will make a tremendous difference in so many lives. Please be sure to watch for this mailing and remember to send in your pledge because when we all come together to help, 
miracles happen.